They say their cause is compassion for animals. What's going on in there is an injustice. Has seen a huge jump in the number of us going vegan. Hello Jeremy, how are you? I don't know whether you're angry today or just generally about the whole thing. Well, I'm a bit upset to see your sandwich has a piece of a pig's body in there. A dead pig that didn't want to die. Probably uh, pushed, pushed into a gas chamber because that's the most humane method for stunning pigs in the UK, a gas chamber. Is that vegans do seem to be very angry. Yeah, you'd be angry too if there were dogs in the back well, of that truck. My intention at the start was not to get a big social media following, was not to be popular, was not to make it in a news article. It was none of that. Jeremy did wind me up a little bit, which I feel like it's justified passion. I mean, if you'd seen what I'd seen, you'd feel the same way. Uh, radio interview the other day, and I probably got to let that get a little bit heated, more than I should have, um, in retrospect, but you know, only a human being. I don't take any issue with, with vegans, but what we do care about is when it turns militant. A lot of these comments are from vegan activists. Yeah. Uh, rape, murder and slavery, okay? What happens so to your I, cows you uh, can, what happens you to your cows when they cannot produce milk anymore? But I'm not going to deny that that is rape. I will never deny that that is rape. You think that being called a rapist is immoral, but the act of sticking your hand inside of a cow without their consent isn't immoral. You, you, you do get death threats, which is quite ironic coming from people that want peace for animals and... I don't like what they're portraying us to be violent, sending death threats and murderous vegans. I don't understand why, why they did that, eh? A few names being thrown around is nothing compared to what the animals are going through so people can eat their bodies. And when you do provide the evidence of death threats, I will publicly condemn whoever are sending them because that is not a reflection of how we feel about farmers. Like I get death threats sent to me. I have farmers and they're going to turn to events where I'm at and they're going to hurt me, stuff like that. But most worryingly, I have farmers who message me saying they're going to go abuse an animal. They're going to go shoot a car. They're going to go hurt their pigs because I've irritated them. Now, I don't believe that you know this is acceptable from any side. It is exploding. Ethics is coming to the forefront of the discussion. Well, we're on the news now debating with farmers. And okay, and this is what's going to happen. We can't, it's coming to a debate. And you know who's going to win this debate? The truth. No matter how much money they think they got, no matter how much propaganda they think they can perpetuate, it's going to backfire on them. Because they don't want to bring to the light the most humane slaughterhouse on the planet. Let's put some glass walls up. Okay, let's see it. They don't want it to come to light. Hello, Joey speaking. Hi Joey, my name's Becca. I'm coming from BBC Radio 2 at the Jeremy Vine Show. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Um, Joey, yesterday you were on the TV on Victoria Derbyshire and we would very much like to have you on our programme as well because I thought it was a very interesting exploration oh. into vegan activism. Oh, wow. That's something you're up for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be keen, I'll be keen for that for sure, yeah. Alright, so here we are on the way to BBC Radio. We're going to be doing a little interview with the Jeremy Vine show. Yeah, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. No, um, I'm what's the out. procedure? Yeah. Um, so you're not on until half past, so you've got plenty of time. That's plenty of time. Yeah, you be alone, there's no angry farmer. Oh, in, no, because we so. we're ready anyway. <laughs> no, we're ready. <laughs> Always ready, just in case. Ready to go. Uh, is the farmer willing to come on and have a discussion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on the phone, though. Yeah. Yeah. Please, can I guess Joey get a pass to come up on the Jeremy Vine show? Is it a good point, Jay, that if, in a way people are making choices about what they eat and how they consume, and sheep are bred, a lot of them, to to be consumed, cows are. So does would, that change the moral value of those animals? They live otherwise. Yeah, but did, should they be grateful to be sent to a slaughterhouse and be exploited for their bodies? Is it just the manner of death that upsets you? No, it's the fact that we're exploiting them and using them at all and condemning them to death when it's unnecessary. Sometimes someone's going to say something hurtful, they might wave a ham sandwich in your face and try to rally you up on in front of seven million people on radio. <laughs> but... You got the last laugh. Yeah. So what you do in that situation is... Don't let your emotions run the conversation. Uh, John, John, are you the victim in this situation? You sit in the front of your truck and drop animals off to their death. Who is the real victim here, my friend? Where is your justification for that? Um, in retrospect, I probably could have stayed a little bit more calmer and still said exactly the same things that I said, but I'm only human. Like, sometimes it does get to me. Here, my friend. Thank you, well done. Thanks for that. You did well, God. You that would have been full of power. <laughs> Thank so you. I get really passionate in those yeah, moments. That's right. you could be passionate. Yeah, you know, and like I said, I don't think he's a bad person. He's just a product of a society that thinks this is okay. Am I perfect? No, I still get angry every now and then. You know, I'm, I'm a human being, okay? What, what's happening to animals gets to me every single day. And when someone does something insensitive, you know, and says something really insensitive, I, I you know, 
every now and then I react. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Hope they in. like the show. Great. Yeah, yeah, they uh, <laughs> Hey, 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 if you're interested on the back you can this is a case sensitive link, you can do a little vegan challenge. Okay, now we just got out of the Jeremy what's his name? Jeremy Vine. Okay, we just got out of the Jeremy Vine show. Now as I walked out, she said that about seven and a half million people have listened to that show. Now I just dropped the most explicit animal liberation message on a very mainstream radio station. This is crazy. How are you doing, man? You Good, just, man. You just come back from TV. Yeah, feel pumped, man. Feel what, pumped. What channel are you on? IT, live, RTV. Live on this morning. Yeah, this morning show, so. And we just got the recording here, so we're going to react to it. How do you think it went before we watch it? Uh, after watching it back, I think I said what I needed to say very succinctly, and I think I've done the animals justice for sure. All right, it's a morning here. We're in Ireland, Northern Ireland. I feel so sick, and we're just waiting for. Um, we've got three interviews with the media. Uh, this morning we've already had three or four interviews with media it's gone we've gone viral over the, the UK media this week hello Joey speaking Joey it's good morning how are you doing good thanks can you hear me properly I knew I wanted to help inspire people I had a really rough life I wanted to give back I wanted to help animals animals were screaming out for help do you drink milk, mate? Yes. Cow's milk, breast milk? Yeah. Drink cow's milk, mate? You guys still drink cow's milk? Coconut, soy milk? I love the uh, dairy campaigning we were doing today. That was great. Yeah, they steal the babies off the mothers. They kill the, the boys because they don't produce milk. Forcibly impregnate her, uh, enslave her, and then when she can't produce milk anymore after about five or six years, they chop her head off and... That's lovely. This is the most powerful thing, waking people up with education. You know, people just, oh wow, I didn't know that. Still drinking breast milk, are you? Do you still drink breast milk? You don't? You do? Still drink cow's milk, do you guys? Is that real fur? I oh, know, they're obviously real fur, eh? This one here is dedicated as dedicate entire life to animal rights and speaking up for those who have no voice. Uh, he's pretty fearless in his approach. Just help me and welcome and joy to Northern Ireland today. Thank you. We got plant milks, coconut, rice milk, soy milk, no hormones in there, no saturated fat, no blood, no feces. Um, better for you, better for the animals. Do you still drink cow's milk? Still drinking milk from a breast of a cow, mate? You guys still breastfeeding from a cow? Still drink breast milk? Still breastfeeding from a cow? No? A lot of people don't know what happens, that's all. If they knew they probably wouldn't consume it. The world's, the world's going to follow sooner or later, it's just that it's taken us time to get this information out to people. But the majority of people, when they see it, they don't want to support it. Almond milk, rice milk, soy milk, uh, coconut milk. Do you still breastfeed off a cow? Right. Time to wean. The boys are not financially viable either, they don't produce milk. So they'll be killed for veal. Because if you get people to use their heart, they're, they're more likely to use it in the future. Okay, and this is how we create a more peach, a peaceful, altruistic world. Still drink cow's milk, my friend? Yeah. It's breast milk for a baby. We're grown adults, we don't need breast milk anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about drinking breast milk from a cow? Just a uh, bit of information on cow's milk. If they see the information, yeah. they might feel compelled to change. Yeah. And they don't want to change, they feel comfortable in their lifestyle. Showing someone what happens in a slaughterhouse, uh, footage just doesn't lie. It's right there. You know, and it's, it's a lot harder for people to argue with you, I found, when they're looking at a screen with something really horrific going on in it. Um, everyone likes to pick out the most humane farm on earth. Get the farmer from that farm to, to be an advocate for on behalf of all farms in the UK. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. 99% of animals are factory farmed. Okay, the other 1% go to this, exactly the same slaughterhouse as all the rest of the animals. Alright, so they're, they're, don't let them try to trick you into thinking that these animals, even on the high welfare farms, are treated any better than these because in the slaughterhouse they all get treated exactly the same. I mean, we're not, we're not animal welfare activists, which they labelled us in the BBC. Now we got free range animals on the back of those trucks, yep. We got uh, factory farmed animals on the back of those trucks. We got humane welfare standard RSPCA approved animals on the back of the same trucks, all going to the same place. We don't want better conditions for animals while they're enslaved and on the way to the abattoir to get their throats slit. I challenge any farmer 
any farmer, any humane farmer to show us what happens when their animals go in that truck and go inside of that door to the slaughterhouse. But they want to be transparent about the whole process. Show us your animals struggling for their very last breath. We, we don't want uh, to find a better way to enslave someone. We don't want to find a better way to kill someone. Okay, this is, this is absurd. Okay, so do not entertain that with them. Yeah, we're vegan, that's why. Uh, this organisation is? No, what is it? Uh, this is Anonymous for the Voiceless. It's a vegan organisation that promote uh, ah, right. peace to animals. Yeah. Right, okay. Boycott animal products because when you give them money, you pay for animals to be slaughtered, to be confined, to be sexually abused. If we wouldn't do it to a human being, we shouldn't be doing it to an animal, basically. How much about the dairy industry you do? Did you want to know? Don't be afraid. Here, take a card. Take a card, brother. Look up Dairy is Scary on the front, all right? On YouTube, goes for four minutes. Dairy is Scary. Uh, I, I really want to get people to understand the ethics. I think that that is irrefutable. That point cannot be, be refuted unless they admit that they'd like the same treatment for their loved one, a pet, or themselves. Okay. Otherwise, they're just a massive hypocrite. So that the ethics point cannot be refuted. It's the strongest argument we have. You claim to care for some, you're eating others. People do not align their beliefs with their actions. They're they're caring for animals with one hand, but in the other hand is a burger with the body of a cow in it. They're saying it's okay for other beings, but not okay for themselves. It's okay for these animals, but not okay for their own animal. Okay, this is pure hypocrisy and it's easy to point out. You want to live in peace and harmony yourself, you're condemning others to a slaughterhouse who want to live just as much as you. There's so many contradictions. Immediate perspective. Wow, those feelings that I've got in my stomach, that's nothing compared to what they're going through. Nothing. So don't even entertain that. There's, they are the ones in that truck, prison, in prison for their whole life, about to have their throats slashed open. This isn't about us. It's about them. Compared to what they're going through, it's nothing. We're essentially bringing to light what's done, done in the dark. Once the truth comes out, their industry is just gonna go Because kids don't wanna see animals get their throats slashed open. No one does. Okay, we're showing the public the faces of their food before it's slaughtered. It, something in me just hated the fact that animals were being bullied to an extent that you couldn't imagine. It doesn't smell like death in a slaughterhouse, it smells like fear, okay, like struggle. Um, I'll never forget it. Seeing what they go through every single day, it hurts my heart and I try my best to give back. We are witnessing people uh, paying for and consuming animal products every second of every day. Every, it's everywhere. Okay, you are witnessing an injustice right in front of your eyes. That is where the obligation is. We know. I realised something that they are suffering, okay, and no one's listening to them. Okay, human beings can voice their pain. Okay, they can write a Facebook status, go and talk to someone about it. If they are getting abused, they can scream out for help in our language and we'll listen. Okay, animals, no one's listening to. Hello, Joey speaking. Hi, Joey, it's Nicola here at the Nolan Show. These animals do not know what they Irrelevant, are. irrelevant. They don't want to die, my friend. You know that your cows do not want to die. What, what sort of animal do you farm? Cows? Sorry? Do you farm cows or sheep? We have cows and we have sheep. Okay, so do you, do you know your animals do not want to die? So that there is a livestock market, um, they take all the animals in their trailers, all the farmers to sell the animals' bodies. The media is going crazy on this right now. Yeah. It's a real... That's just great. That's happening now. Uh, just recently in the last week, okay, televised all over the newspapers. I mean, it hasn't always been good publicity, but the point is, is they're starting to listen. There's no evidence for any death threats. I'd like to see evidence. I mean, I could show people death threats in my right now in my inbox from farmers and non-vegans saying I'll slit your throat or kill you and they're starting to listen and you can tell that they're they're getting a bit wary of it because they're trying to discredit a whole peaceful movement by labeling us um, extremists we've been labeled extremists and violent vegans which is just nothing further from the truth we want peace for animals and peace for all beings we're coming up against uh, industry big industry so they're gonna make claims to discredit us as a movement definitely some truth to what we're saying because they, they definitely are trying their best to perpetuate their propaganda. Uh, women's rights activists, militant. 
They used to call them militant, okay? They're doing the same thing with vegans now. Militant, we want peace for animals. The women's rights movement was probably ridiculed too. Oh, women deserve uh, rights to vote, that's ridiculous. Uh, the black rights movement, ridiculed too. Oh, blacks want to integrate, what a joke. You know, so the animal rights movement is going to be ridiculed and it's just so predictable. People are going to, oh, animals deserve rights, they don't matter, they belong in my sandwich. So people are going to make fun of it, but that's fine because they're, they're passing through the, the three stages of truth. You know, you have good and bad in every movement, but predominantly, a movement that cares about innocent beings like animals is a movement full of peace, people that care about justice. Well, because we're challenging people's belief systems, and I think that, that the industry would love for us to be to look like a bunch of militant extremists, and I think that that's what, what they're trying to perpetuate in the media, which just isn't true. I mean, I'm not violent at all. I mean, I have I've been violent in my past, but this is this is about me creating peace on earth. I mean, I want peace for animals. I want peace for humans, and this is a peaceful movement. And we do not tolerate any type of violence or aggression on our side. We do not tolerate it. I would say that we need to be non-violent and peaceful if that's what we're trying to promote. So this is what I'm trying to create in the movement. I'm trying to create a movement of respect for individuals who talk, who educate. Uh, this is our approach. Violence is not part of that. Aggression is not part of that. Name calling is not part of that. And my, my workshop is online for everyone to see and they can see exactly what I promote. Name calling. I mean, it, 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 uh, name oh, name calling. Calling that. someone a murderer? Yeah. So, so would you say that someone who kills animals for a living is a murderer? I'm, I'm, I'm not really going to pass judgment, I'm just... Yeah, 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 no, you, you're, you're interviewing me, but... Alright, we're just arriving to a slaughterhouse now to do a surprise vigil, and we're looking for the, the guys. Uh, we're going to park away from the slaughterhouse. There they are. They don't know we're coming, because last time they come, they shut the slaughterhouse down. So we're going to surprise them, and they kill about 3,200 pigs here a day. When, when other human beings see other human beings showing animals compassion, it's contagious. Yeah. Do you know why we're here? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. Okay, so we're, we're part of the SAVE movement. Okay, so what we do is we stand and we bear witness to animals before they come into slaughter. They're just pigs, but, but we're saying, no, they're not just pigs. Okay, these are animals that didn't want to die and we're showing them respect that they deserve. Are you holding the trucks back, are you? Is there any trucks, deliveries coming? There's trucks coming. So we're not here to create any problems with the staff. We don't, we, there's no hate for any of the staff here. It's a peaceful, love-based approach. We're just here to see the animals and then we leave and that's it. Just give us 30 seconds. Just give us 30 seconds, my friend. We only want 30 seconds and then we'll let, let them straight in, okay? Just watch your feet, guys. Hey, sweetheart. Watch your feet, watch your feet. Come, move in guys, move in, off their property. I realised that the animals are the most vulnerable, defenceless, helpless beings on earth, okay, and they're getting abused and killed to the tune of an unimaginable number, and I thought that they needed my help the most. You know, this is, just hasn't been done here before, and usually the police uh, and the slaughterhouse come to, we all come to an, a collective agreement and it's a lot safer, well. but... Yeah, they're not here to facilitate any kind, they're here to basically keep the peace. Okay, so th this place here slaughters the pigs, cuts them up into pieces and packages them too. So they go in live pigs and they come out in the packages and they go straight to the supermarkets, Sainsbury's and Tesco's. Because you realise, wow, this is really happening. This is happening around the corner. Every second of every single day. And they've got a little pig picture on the little gates here. That's who they're killing here, it's a bit disturbing. We've got a like, little... Got a little religious quote next to a slaughterhouse. It's not really a place of God here. Over here is a vet. They got sheep in the back, they're caring for animals here. Across the road, stabbing him to death. Excuse me, excuse me, why do you label this a food company when it's uh, dead bodies of innocent animals?
you have to ask yourself that question. I don't think there's a humane way to take you know, someone's freedom away from them and use their body when they don't have a choice in that. I'm asking for the, the, the right to live their life in freedom without the threat of being harm or, harmed or exploited. Basic fundamental rights, that's it. Um, I don't think we view animals as victims. We view them as objects and uh, products. If that isn't slavery, I don't know what is. I mean, they're sentient beings who desire a life of freedom and liberty like any other sentient being on earth. And they are being used and imprisoned and slaughtered against their will. We didn't abolish human slavery because it was bad for the environment. We abolished human slavery because it was bad for the individual that was, their rights were being infringed. They are not free. They are, their rights don't exist, people don't even view them as victims and the magnitude of the injustice can be seen on every single human being's plate on earth nearly. They're birds, they're like, pigs are like dogs, cows are like beautiful intelligent animals. Even if animals weren't intelligent, still wouldn't justify doing what we do to them. Okay, because if a human being's not intelligent, that wouldn't justify injustice towards a, you know, someone with a mental disability, would it? Okay, so intelligence does not determine moral value. Sentience does. Maternal animals, they get their children taken off them, they bellow out for days. You know, you can stand out the front of the gas chamber and hear the pigs screaming for mercy. Would you say that, oh, if we wanted to put these dog meat vendors out of business, that, oh no, that, that, that the dog meat vendor was the victim in that situation? They help them connect the dots between their bacon and that puppy dog-like animal that didn't want to die. Or would you say it was the dog that was being abused and killed and chopped up into pieces? Because if someone was abusing dogs, okay, sending dogs to a slaughterhouse to be chopped up into pieces, and someone called them a murderer, now would we say that that, that dog murderer was the victim because someone called them what they are? Think about it. When I seen dog meat for the first time, I was like, oh my God, that's wrong. That's but I'd see cow saying. meat, and even as a vegan, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's normal. Yeah. But why? Why do I think like that? I want to talk to you about dealing with criticism, something that I get a lot. I got a lot of it this week too. You know, put, I put myself out there a lot. Uh, the media have been, you know, going for it with me, uh, character attacks. Other vegans have been ha coming at me, um, criticizing me for speaking up for animals in a certain way. They didn't feel like it uh, did the vegan community good. And I'm getting criticised a bit and you know sometimes it does get to you especially when you've been working really hard and you're so passionate about this and you're really just doing this to, to for the good of animals you really your heart's in the right place but I, rem I reminded myself of something and Laura helped me remember too like wait a second why are you doing this for well I'm not doing this for vegans am I do you think the animals are going to criticise me for speaking up on national radio 7 million people telling them that they're suffering in a gas chamber I think the animals are going to go oh you're a bit too abrupt in that interview oh you know you shouldn't have spoke with such ferocity about you know of course they're not of course they're not you know we've got every single right to be angry about this no matter what you do you're going to get criticized okay so just do what's right and you know what's right because your heart tells you i used to be a bit aggressive in my videos uh because of obviously the past i came from i was learning to reintegrate and i was you know still having trouble i still had some personality traits that i was trying to work through and I was pretty pissed off about what was going on with animals. I didn't like her, I, didn't, I hated seeing them get abused and bullied, and I was trying to defend them and stick up for them in the way that I thought was best. And, and in retrospect, it wasn't the most effective way, even though my heart was in the right place. I was letting aggression run the party, and it's not an effective way to communicate, and I learned that. I've learned that now, and now I reach many more people. It's interesting that, that people who are trying to help animals, those people are labelled terrorists, but the ones who are actually forcibly breeding animals, okay, sending them on, on, on trucks to be slaughtered against their will, they're not labelled terrorists. They're labelled uh, good citizens. So, I mean, do you think it's ridiculous that the, the, the camp and police are, are investigating some of these people? I think we need to analyse who's really terrorising who here. Uh, when we look at the mutilations that happen in all farms across the board, uh, horns are chopped off of cows, with no anaesthetic, piglets are having their testicles ripped out without out anaesthetic, okay? Towels are clipped off, their teeth are uh, clipped down to the gum. All of this is done without anaesthetic. We're talking about baby animals being mutilated, playing with their privates to get their semen and sticking their semen into the female animals, okay? To breed them into existence. None of this is consensual, by the way. One-year-old cows having the, a fish shoved into, into their anus, being sexually abused against their will. And then, when they're of no use, when their children have been taken off of them for their whole life, after six years, they're sent to a slaughterhouse to have their throats slashed open. Now, 
If this isn't terrorizing innocent beings, what is? Get them to think about others and not themselves, okay? And this is how we create a better world. You know, I wasn't vegan my whole life either. I was a lot far, very far from it myself. So I'm not here to be superior. Billions a week, you know, billions of week, tortured, slaughtered, ripped out the ocean, suffocated, stabbed constantly, every second of every day. Nothing amazing ever happens inside your comfort zone, okay? So don't let fear run your life. So if you keep holding on and firing through it, you know, you never know what can happen. I'll never have this chance now that I can spread my light and, and help people and help animals. Um, it's not a personal choice if someone has to die for your food, you know, and if there's a plant-based option, why not choose that? These animals are coming back from the grave, haunting people from the grave. Um, you know, you're eating too many of their bodies and, you know, bang, you're gone like that. That really snapped me out of it too. What are we doing to animals? Like, human beings are not evil people, and I believe that. I just think that we're doing, we're, we're doing evil things. So what, I'm, what I always say to myself is I'm going to see this through to the very end. So they're cutting down the, the forest to grass feed cattle or to grow soybeans, not for soy milk for, or tofu for vegans like some people like to think. They're feeding that soy to livestock. We've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine Show me teeth. yours. A lion has fangs, they're true carnivores. If they see a rabbit run past them, they chase the rabbit and eat the rabbit. If we see a rabbit run past us, our instinct is to play with the rabbit. We are not killers, okay? Human beings are not killers. We have hands for picking fruit, incisors for biting apples, okay? We do not eat our fresh, raw blood, bones, entrails, roadkill, just like a lion would. I mean, I'm sure anyone who wanted to change the world had an unwavering belief that it's possible, and I do. The biggest threat to any movement is the movement itself. Look at this, this is a very crucial time for us right now. So get involved. Keep going, because right now is where it's, where it's all going down. This is where we need you, bang. Everyone needs to be on it, on it, hard. You know, in a hundred years, how would you like to be remembered? Do you think, do you think that you will be remembered? You know, might, might be remembered alongside the abolitionists? I never come into this movement thinking, I want to be remembered, respected, I want to be famous. That is not my intention. My intention was to help animals, to help them out of their suffering. Strike while the iron's hot, because this is our year to smash it into the mainstream. Oh, there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Scottish by heritage. My last name is Armstrong. My father was born in Glasgow. Yeah, it was emotional. We went to the uh, place where the Armstrong clan originated. Um, and I spread some of my father's ashes. I'm now in Ireland where my father's, uh, my father's father's um, buried and his brother. So I'm gonna leave the rest of his ashes here. Thank you. Oh, stop, I'm embarrassed. Can't tap the camera off. <laughs>